Good morning, everybody. Let's get started here. For those of you using the cars, if you can hear me, why don't you honk your horn just to make sure we can hear you. I don't think they can hear me there. Nobody honk their horns. Here we go. Amen. 
like that song is the best way to kick off meeting back in person again. It just feels like there's been so many changes. We go from being in person to having to go strictly online to having to meet outside, back to online and back and forth, but God has never stopped. He's kept his promise. He's protected us. He's found a way the whole time, and I think that's just kind of what keeps us going is just knowing that God is going to take care of us, and I know that sounds so cliche sometimes, but it's true. Sometimes the simplest things, they just say the biggest truth. So I want to read a scripture to you. It's Psalm 9, 1 through 2. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt you and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that we are able to find another way to meet, that you have broken down every barrier that's prevented us from meeting or speaking about you. You have broken down all those barriers. We, we rebuke anything that may come in the middle of meeting with you today. I ask that you open our hearts to the word you have for us and just help us to hear your truth today. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Yes, God. God, these songs that we sing, we don't sing them just because they sound good or they feel good, God. We sing them because they bring you glory, Lord. Because you're the God of all the universe, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And no one is worthy of praise like you are. And so, God, today we give you that praise. We give you our hearts. And, God, we pray that you would send your spirit today and renew our minds as well. We thank you, God. We love you. And in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you're in the, the car, you can recline or do whatever it is you like to do. Hey, why don't you give us another honk if you're listening from your car? Give us a nice, yes. Nice. Didn't the worship team do awesome? Man, and thank the, thank the Lord for awesome weather. I know this morning uh, it was uh, pretty brisk this morning, but thank God, um, you know, the sun came out. I'm so excited that we get to meet together again. And those watching online or that will be in a bit, um, just want to say welcome. We're so glad that we're able to meet. So just a few updates starting this Sunday. This is our first Sunday back in person. We're going to be out here in the parking lot. Um, we're going to have a section for those who want to watch from their vehicle, whether you have kids or you just want to kind of stay warm or you want to stay a little bit more distant and cautious. You can watch from your vehicle. We'll be um, streaming it to the radio every week, 92.3, um, and then we'll post it online uh, afterward. But we're so excited that we get to be together. God talks about being in community with one another. Uh, you know, the verse that kept on coming to me throughout this entire, I guess, through entire 2020 and now 2021 is John 16, 33. And it says, in this world, you will face many trials. But I love this next part. It says, but take heart because I have overcome the world, which is so awesome because we know that no matter what happens, no matter um, how the world or the enemy might try to shake our foundation, we can't because our foundation is in Christ and we can take heart because he's overcome the world. And so that's something that I want to encourage you guys to remember. Maybe uh, put that on your refrigerator. Put it on your visor in your vehicle. Take heart because I have overcome the world. Take heart because even though the enemy might try to still kill and destroy things in your life, I have overcome the world. And so that's something that we can do. And right now I just want to take a few moments, pray for our campus, pray for our other campuses that are meeting. We're one church with many locations. And we want to pray for them right now. So let's do that together. God, we love you. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your provision, God, for your hand on us, God, despite what the, the enemy might try to bring, God, despite what's going on in the world. God, you are our constant. God, you're our foundation. God, you're our hope. And God, right now we just pray, God, for each and every one of our campuses that are meeting right now. God, that you would bring peace. God, that you would bring strength. And God, that your spirit would move through the service, whether it's through the worship or through the sermon, God that you would be there, God, that you would bring restoration, God, that chains would be broken, God, that we would come back to you, God, that we would be the people that you've called us to be, that we would walk in alignment with your spirit, God, that we would be, continue to be an extension of who you are, and we pray this in your name, amen. A uh, few things, if you don't already have the church app, I want to encourage you to get that, you can get that on your iOS uh, or Android device, you can go to your app store and just type in church center. And then you can go ahead and search for Refinery Church once you have that. It's a great place to stay up to date with what's happening at the church. And also that the reopening, you can watch past messages. In fact, we'll post this week's message uh, later on today. That way you can rewatch it if you'd like. Um, but again, it's the best place to stay connected. You can give online through there. You can register for future events. You can join small groups. In fact, today we're going to be launching our small groups. Uh, we have four different groups that are going on. Um, but it's a great place to go ahead and sign up there. And so let me encourage you to go ahead and do that. And again, small groups are starting. And our youth group, um, we haven't had youth for uh, a few months, but they're going to be starting virtually this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So if you're interested, I want to encourage you, uh, fill out the Connect card digitally and just in the comment section uh, slash prayer request section, you can go ahead and just put interested in uh, the youth service for my kids. That way we can get you a Zoom link throughout the week. That way they can go ahead and participate. And it's going to be a great time. And so that's happening in small groups. And then every Sunday we're going to be back here. And we're going to kind of just play this week by week. Uh, we've been um, very thankful. We've been working with the school district, with the County of Public Health, as well as far as reopening. And 
we're able to do that outdoors while being socially distanced. That's why the chairs are the way they are. That's why we have a section in the back. Uh, but we'll also pay attention to what's the weather going to be like. Over the next couple Sundays, it looks great. In fact, next week even looks warmer than this week. So thank the Lord for that. Um, but that's what we're going to be doing. And we'll keep you up to date through our social media, through our website, through our app, and things like that. So if you can continue to pray for us with that. And so um, right now, we're just going to take a couple moments to pray for this morning's tithes and offering. We don't have ushers to go by just because of everything. We want to keep everybody safe. But at the end of service, if you have want to give a physical donation, you can do it to the box over here on my left, your right. Or you can give online, which is the safest way. Um, get your safe and secure donation through refinerychurch.com, through the app, or um, you could do it through text to give. But let's go ahead and pray right now that God would bless the sovereign. God, we love you. And we thank you for your many blessings. And right now we give back what you've already given to us. And we just ask that you would use it for your glory, that we would continue to be good stewards of that. God, that you would use it to continue to bless the, the missionaries that we support. God, I think of Breaking the Chains, a local uh, project, God, that we support that helps women out of human trafficking. God, that you would be with them, that you would minister to them. God, I think of the many missionaries that we support overseas. God, that you would be with them as they're carrying out your gospel, God, to the ends of the earth. I just pray that uh, you would continue to be with us. God, again, continue to be with our other campuses. In your name we pray. Amen. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be a series called Our Why. And if you've ever seen social media or been on it, sometimes you'll see people post a picture of their kids, post a picture about something that is important to them, and they'll say, this is my why. This is why I do what I do. This is why I go to school late at night. This is why I work two jobs. This is why I do A, B, C, or D, because this is their why. Well, our why as a church, our why is what we're going to be talking about. Why do we do what we do? And so um, we're going to be talking about that over the next few weeks. And really quick, church, church is a God idea. You and I were created to be in community with one another, and the church is a people. It's not a place. It's not a building. In fact, it's not even these solar panels that we're meeting underneath. It's not even their vehicle. But church is a people. But it's a God idea. Matthew 16 says, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. So in this series, we're going to be talking about the local church. In fact, our name, Refinery Church, one of the reasons we came up, uh, up with that name is because it's the process that about you and I. When you and I, as we go through life, as we, you know, pray and we grow in our relationship with Christ, God's refining us. He sh uh, he's, you know, sanding those edges, those rough edges in our life to make us more like him. It's a refining process. Just like God created people and we all have different personalities, different campuses, different churches have that. See, we're one church with many locations. We have one in East Fresno. We have one in West Fresno. We have one in Kingsburg. We have our North Campus. We have our downtown campus. We have our online campus that's soon to be launching. And God created each and every one of them with different personalities. Just like you and I have different personalities, just like you and I have different uh, sports teams. How many of you guys have a different sports team than me? By the way, I'm a huge, huge Giants fan for baseball, huge 49er fan. I'm sorry if that's not your team. Also feel sorry for me because they haven't made the playoffs this year, and so it's been really lonely watching everybody cheer for their team and mine not doing too good. Um, but just like there's different personalities, the church is the same way. Each gathering of the church has qualities that distinguish itself from others. When Jesus left earth and returned to heaven, he gave the entire church what is called the Great Commission. That's, this is why we do what we do. And it's found in Matthew, and it says this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. As a church, God's equipped us to do our portion. We're to be his hands and feet. That's why we do what we do. In fact, we have the saying at the church that we're the in and out of churches. How many of you just by hearing that made you hungry for a nice burger? I know it did for me. I'm like, give me some nice animal style fries. Give me a nice, you know, double double. So good. But we have the saying that we're the in and out of churches. We're not McDonald's. We're not Taco Bell. We're not Roots Chris. But why do we say that? Well, if you go to in and out, they have a really simple they don't have 26 items. If you go to Taco Bell or McDonald's, it's like, oh, can I have a number 26 or number 25? No, you go to In-N-Out, it's very simple. I think they have three <laughs> different meals that you can get. But what they do, they do it with quality. The, the people that work there enjoy working there. It's a good atmosphere. See, at the church, we're saying we're not going to have every ministry in the book. But what we're going to do, we're going to do it with quality because God deserves our best. 
God deserves our best. And everything we do should stem off the vision of the church. And our vision is helping people find Christ and become fully devoted followers. Everything that we do should stem from that. It needs to be simple, but there needs to be quality. And again, our name, Refinery Church, defines that. You go to Zechariah 13.9, it says, I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. And I will say, these are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. If you go to Malachi 3, it talks about that refining process there as well. It says, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. So we talked about the uniqueness of in and out how it's clean, how it's simple. Helping people find Christ, that's our simple menu. And again, that process is filled out through three different things. So how do we carry out helping people find Christ and become fully devoted followers? Well, the first thing is we think everybody should have an encounter, a personal encounter with God. That we should all be encouraged by one another through small groups, what we call encourage groups. And lastly, you and I should all engage. See, God's equipped each and every one of us with special talents, and we should use that. We should use that. God calls us to do life together. Our core values help us to carry out the commission God's given Refinery Church. And today we want to focus on that first E, and that's encounter. Encounter. Encountering God is what God made us for. We're created to be in relationship with Christ. But sin separates us. Sin separates us from Christ. Romans 3 says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Because of sin, because of that separation, you and I both need a personal connection, a personal encounter with God, an awakening, a revelation, a realization of who God truly is. Just because my parents, just because my friends, just because my neighbor has a relationship doesn't mean I'm covered. No, you and I need to have our own personal encounter with Jesus Christ. I used to think growing up, oh, my mom having a relationship is good enough for me because, you know, we're related. In fact, if God comes back, I'll just grab onto her pants and I'll go uh, with her when she goes to heaven. That's what I used to say growing up. But no, you, each and every one of us, you and I need to have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us must have that encounter. So how can you and I have that encounter? Well, the first thing, we've got to respond to God's invitation. God's always trying to draw near to us. Why? Because a lot of times we need that nudge. Now, how many of you have ever seen kids on a video game? See, my son loves playing video games. My kids like playing. Uh, my two girls like playing with their Barbie dolls. Um, anytime you see kids, whether they're a teenager or a younger kid, and they get soaked into something, it's almost like they forget that a... Uh, they have homework to do, that they have chores to do, or that dinner's ready. I, I kid you not, if we don't interrupt my kids saying that, hey, lunch is ready or dinner's ready, they will never come out of their room. They will just be sucked into the game or sucked into their toys. And so they need that nudge. Um, Hello, your food's getting cold. It's just there. Oh, no, just one more second, Mom, one more minute. I just got one more game I got to do. See, if we don't give them that nudge, they won't know. God's the same way. If God doesn't nudge us, you and I are just going to continue going about life doing the same routine thing over and over, and we need that nudge to be reminded to have an encounter with who he is. So what does that mean for God, that God draws near to us? Well, if you go to John 6, it says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So again, why does God need to draw, draw near to us? It's because you and I need to be reminded we need that nudge. And sometimes God will give us a nudge. He'll get, us, uh, get our attention one way or another. Anybody ever have that? It's like everything's going smooth. You're just in a routine, and then something happens, something in your life, and it draws you back to where, God, I'm sorry that I haven't been giving you the attention that you need. It could be something. Maybe your car breaks down. Maybe you're, maybe somebody got a hold of your debit card numbers, and then something happened, and then God's just trying to get your attention. God will use certain events, use certain things. Not that he, God causes all things to work for the good of those who love him. I'm not saying he's going to cause something bad, but he'll use a situation to get your attention because you and I need to draw near to him. God draws to us because you and I need that nudge. And b while we're created to be in relationship with him, sin separates us from him. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The human heart is deceitful of all things, and desperately wicked. How many of you ever made a bad decision in your life? Anybody? 
Yeah. Maybe it's subscribing to all of those streaming sites. Maybe it's just, I don't know, buying something. You know what I hate? The one thing I can't stand is the saying, other people bought this on Amazon. You buy something on Amazon, and there's that section on the, the bottom that says, other people also bought this. That gets me into trouble all the time. I'll go on there, and I'm like, oh, I'll buy some. Oh, that looks really nice. Oh, you might be interested in this. I can't stand that because that will get me in trouble every time. That gets me in trouble every time. And so what we tend to do is we justify those decisions as we go about life. Oh, it's okay because I really need this. Or you know what? I'll tell my wife this. You know what? I really need that bigger TV because I really don't want to strain my eyes because I don't want my eyes to get worse as I get older. So we just need a bigger TV. Why don't we just settle for that 90-inch TV because it's going to be better for us in the long run. Or think about this. Now your family can over can come over and we can watch a movie together. How's that? We'll, we'll invite my in-laws. We'll get them over and we'll invite uh, all these people. And But we need a big TV in order to do that. But really, it's just so I can watch the game on a bigger TV. So we justify it and then we start making excuses for the decision decisions that we do and God's saying hold on listen to what I have for you see when we go about life in just a constant routine we tend to exclude God from the decisions in our life and God's saying he's trying to give us that nudge I want you to walk down the path I have for you I have a plan for you and a hope and there's that hope while you and I are born into sin and need a savior there's hope the hope we have is that when God draws to us that we respond to him. Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened in order that you may know the hope which he has called you to, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. See, the Holy Spirit helps us go through life. We start seeing the world, and we start realizing that these things can't fill that God-sized hole in our life. So God draws us near to him, and when we realize that, that's when we respond to that encounter. That's when you and I have an encounter. And that's when an encounter with, with Christ can produce a new life. So the second question is, how can we live in this new life? Well, we've got to worship from the top of our heads down to our toes. And guess what? When we worship, it requires sacrifice. It requires sacrifice. Worship isn't just singing a couple of songs out in the parking lot under the, some solar panels or worshiping online or, or worshiping while you're driving. No, worship is a lifestyle, and it requires sacrifice. In fact, when you start a company, when you start your own business, it requires sacrifice. It means some late nights. It means, you know what, I'm going to have to step out in faith. When you decide, you know what, I'm going to have to further my education, that requires, guess what, some late nights. It requires, you know what, I'm not going to be able to go hang out with my friends as much as I need or as much as I want to because I'm going to go ahead and make a choice, a sacrifice to further my education. Or, you know what, I'm going to really go ahead and put an emphasis on spending more time with my kids I want that relationship to grow, so I'm going to sacrifice some other things, which it's a good sacrifice, so that way I can make sure my relationship grows. When you and I give our life to Christ, it requires sacrifice. Sacrifice shows how much you and I value something or someone. You want to go ahead and grow your relationship with your spouse? Guess what? It's going to require some sacrifice. It's going to require you putting aside some of your personal things, your personal, you know, um, things that you want to do and saying, you know what? I'm going to put my relationship with my spouse above all other things. That's the same thing with our relationship with Christ. I want my relationship with Christ to be here. I'm going to have to put some other things on the back burner because this is most important. You want to experience that new life? It's going to require sacrifice. We must set our heart on loving God above this world. See, all these other things, again, furthering your education is great. Starting a new business is great. But those are temporary. That's this life. A relationship with Christ is eternal. It goes beyond this life. So we've got to set our heart on loving God above this world. God wants our best, not our leftovers. Well, if I have time after my show, I'll go ahead and spend some time reading the Bible. No, God wants our best not our leftovers. And sometimes that might require putting an alarm on your phone. How many of you are like me and you have like five alarms in the morning so that way you can wake up? It's like uh, 405, 406, 407, 411, four, and then it starts coming to these random times. You might need to set an alarm so that way you can put an emphasis on that relationship with Christ. But God wants our best, and it's going to require sacrifice. I'm going to close with this as the band comes up. See, God wants to have an encounter with each and every one of us. 
He wants us to come to know him as our Lord and Savior. He wants us to live a way that puts him first. And he wants you and I to be in- empowered by his Holy Spirit. See, everywhere you look, every time you turn on the news, every time you drive by, you see a billboard. There, you're, the enemy's trying to constantly get our attention and try to deter us from what God has for us. And that's why you and I need to set our sights on things above, and we need to sacrifice by putting other things aside and focusing on what he has for us. And that requires you and I being intentional. So I want to encourage you this week as we go through our series on why we do what we do to focus on that first E, that encounter part. Say, if I really want to experience that encounter with God, I'm going to need to do something different. If you want... If you want to receive something different, guess what? You got to do something different. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. If I want my life to change, if I want God to be at the center, I need to make some changes. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to give my life to Christ and everything's going to be great. No, because in Scripture, we just talked about it. It says, in this life, you will face many trials, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And that's something that you and I need to be reminded of. When we hear somebody um, in our family maybe is going through something or something happens in your life, maybe you lose a job, maybe uh, something happens to your kids at school, maybe you know somebody, um, I'm sure there's a lot of us, maybe we know somebody that um, tested positive for COVID-19 and maybe they didn't make it. That's where we need to take heart because God's overcome the world. There's going to be times in our life where we're going to be challenged our faith will be tested and God's saying take heart because I have overcome the world I'm going to ask that you stand as we close with this last song see our relationship with Christ isn't a sprint it's a marathon and God's got a plan for each and every one of us but guess what it's going to require sacrifice if I want to further my relationship with Christ I'm going to have to make some sacrifices So I want to encourage you, whatever that may look like, maybe it's on the way to work, maybe you drive a lot for work, maybe it's turning off the radio and just talking to God just one-on-one. Maybe it's getting up earlier, setting an alarm, say, you know what, I'm going to spend the first 10, 15 minutes reading the Bible. Or instead of going to bed at 8 o'clock, like I go to bed at 8 o'clock, because that's just how I roll. I go to bed really early as my kids stay up past me, but maybe it's saying, you know what, Instead of going to bed so early, I'm going to go ahead and stay up a little later and spend some time in the Word. I want to encourage you to set encountering your relationship with Christ. Make that a priority. Don't make that secondary. Let's pray together. God, we love you. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice of sending your Son to die for us on a cross. God, despite knowing the depths of our heart, God, despite knowing our failures, God, despite knowing what goes on in our mind, God, despite knowing every pitfall, every shortcoming, God, you still said we were worth it. And God, we give our lives to you. God, we give our heart to you, God, and we want to live a lifestyle of worship. God, we just pray, God, that you would use us as an extension of your hands and feet, God. So not that we we would just have that encounter, but God, that we would share that good news with other people, with our neighbors, with those at the grocery store, God, with our family, with our extended family, God, with our kids. God, we pray this in your name. Amen. Let's worship together. spoke a word you were singing over me and you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me and you have been so so to me.
deserve it still you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of god Still you love for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth You hid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me Thank you for chasing every day, every hour. No matter how fast we run in the other direction, you're still coming after us, trying to bring us back to you. And you do it so lovingly, God. God, we are in awe of you. We are in awe of who you are and how much you love us. We thank you, God. We think that we, we, I pray that we would all carry that with us all throughout this week. Thank you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, it's great to finally be back with everybody. 
Hope you all have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next week.